Namaste Galactic Family. Welcome back to my channel, Indigo Angel. Put a like on the video if you've been rolling with me for a while as you come on in the room, help YouTube recognize my content as valuable for searches. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell to continue to receive my messages. So welcome guys to a Lyran Soul Collective Ascension reading for March 2020 where I'm going to go into the radial encryption, the Lyran Vega star system radial encryption according to the collective density reality fields on Earth in alignment to the stargate that strongholds that dimensional platform within the universal celestial 12 tree grid, right? This is kind of like the foundation of uh, the mechanics when I speak about the density structures in accordance to the activating stargate system. I always put it in that reference point of the celestial universal tree of life. So that way it's just, it's somewhat systematical where you can come to see how each stargate system would be identified through a certain density structure. Therefore, each one of those density structures is upholding several templates of reality fields within those densities. And as we come around through, um, you know, planetary alignments, astrological alignments, and we, um, you know, access more of the celestial spheres that extend into higher oscillatory, higher octaves, higher harmonics within the primal life structures of the atomic reality fields, um, particularly within the dormant portions, um, then we start to awaken more to those reality structures within those dormant portions. So um, not to confuse y'all, I know I start going off on all of this, but this is uh, how I um, basically go on to talk about how this is relative within one's own individual energetic reality field, their uh, base template for morpho morphological diversity, ultimately, uh, morphogenetic diversity, which is where you awaken more to the radial encryptions within the gene brains inside of the body. And um, it's a process of ascension, but this is way down the rabbit hole inside of celestial ascension. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's restructuring biologically according to planetary ascension. So it is relative. And um, as human beings, we are experiencing this primarily and then secondarily planetarily, right? Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to jump into an ascension reading for March 2020 for the Lyran Stargate system. So this is a very vast inner networking system of how you can come to attune to the consciousness, the awareness of these reality fields within these star encryptions. Um, therefore, as you identify your star seed origin or as you identify your home star nation and you attune to more cellular memory within these reality fields become very multidimensional within your present experience. And um, you start to be able to relate to how this is all interconnecting on the deepest levels of cellular repair because that's where um, the Lyrans are right now. The Lyrans are going through the deepest work in the bone density and the deepest DNA repairing at this time. So there's a lot that goes on within the Lyran radial encryption. There's a lot of repairing of the 12 strand overtones, 12 strand base tones, but I think what we haven't been identifying the most and what I honestly haven't brought up a lot in other readings is that the 12th density, um, which would be a Lyran density within the celestial universal tree of life, is actually strong holding three density structures, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, all coinciding to planetary stargate locations um, within the crystal grid networks of the planet, but also coinciding to the actual, actual ma uh, materialization of those density structures within the, the planet's um, grid lines. And so within those structures, there's a lot that the Lyran encryption is doing right now. Um, I almost like to think of this now as a, uh, <clears throat> that the Lyrans are actually here to heal what is called the wall in time, the rip in time, or the ring of fire. And I've been talking about the ring of fire and some of my other Stargate galactic energy updates, um, which would be the Pacific Ocean, 
surrounded by all the volcanic activity. But um, essentially, the Lyrans, uh, what I'm seeing is the Lyrans actually created the human prototype to try and heal this rip in time. And this rip in time was actually uh, happened at the time of the Electric Wars. So this was within the first seeding on 70 Earth. It led to the first separation from the 12 strand DNA. So this is ultimately what the Lyrans are still working on and repairing in all of this time. It also opens up and holds open a doorway. Um, that is uh, holding kind of like an access point to jumping up into the 24 point pillar or the 48 strand um, genetics, um, which would be the equivalent to the Holy Grail retrieval. Um, this holds all the, the genetic keys and it also holds all of the um, information or cellular memory in the base template for all of the morphological uh, diversity within that as well. As you attune more to the celestial templates, you'll go through a grail retrieval activation where you actually awaken more and more dormant genetics within the body's, you know, DNA, memory, all of these molecular structures, even in the organic organs, um, as you come around through the cycles, more and more of this comes up to the surface to be experienced. And um, the Lyrans are kind of the ones that hold down um, this open transharmonic pillar. And um, here they're gonna go through lots of editing of genetic material. And um, it's going to be doing the most work um, in the time of hypermutations, because now we're kind of in the time of hypermutations as we have all of these viruses coming up that are coming in to, um, you know, basically evolve the species into the uh, sixth and seventh root races. And so a lot of, you know, there's a lot of monitoring, a lot of change of genetic information that's being passed to the next generation. And so the Lyrans are basically the origin, the density structure, the stargate location um, that has the most to do with this higher mutation level. I kind of talked about this in my Arcturian collective message, how the Lyrans um, are in the forefront of the mutation because they hold down those highest density structures. The higher the density structure, the higher the mutation. And so um, this was the original war, the original war happened in the first root race in Aramantania, um, where I believe they're repairing three, uh, repairing damages from three planets. Um, and it's basically, you know, the repair of the polarity in the universal body. Um, this is also obliterates the 3D, 5D uh, matrice or paradigm that some still hold within their spirituality, which I haven't really got into too much in any of my videos, um, just because I feel like it's going to be a controversial thing that I kind of don't want to crack open at the moment just because it's going to take a lot of detailed explanation to explain why polarity exists in the universal structures and the cosmic netting as well. But I know many of you are feeling this right now and I don't want to honestly spend a lot of time with too much of this detailed um, information just because I kind of want to get into the reading. But I just wanted to say to you guys, um, we have a super full moon March 9th with several planetary positions, Mars through Saturn, all within relativity to Vagan Lyran Stargate systems. So very active Lyran energy right now. Mercury also goes direct March 9th um, on the super full moon as well. So I know some of you might really be looking forward to that. I know I am. I'm ready to be done with Mercury retrograde. Um, also, just a lot is just going on planetarily right now. We have the, you know, many of you are well informed, the coronavirus. Um, I think we have 130 confirmed cases in the U.S. And um, there's just kind of this looming fear of the unknown that, of this illness and how it's it could be affecting you right now, some of you right now, not all of you. Um, but, you know, there is a seriousness and the urgency of at least desiring um, facts of the totality of it um, and what we are uh, up against, you know, potentially, like we need to be prepared. And so... Um, I just say to all of my star seeds, all of my galaxy seeds, um, just remember that we will not call forth the illness if we are vibrating at a higher frequency than the virus in that reality field. And um, I kind of want to get into some of my more uh, serious theories about it. I don't, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time here. I want to go into the Ascension reading, but I just want to state a couple facts here on that real quick. Essentially... The illness originated 
supposedly from the sea because they know it started in the Wuhan fish market, right? So if this is true, if this is true, that means that marine life is carrying this pestilential. And that also means that um, it could be coming from the unthawing, the unthawing permafrost. So as Earth continues to warm up, it's going to, you know, basically open up this Pandora's box of diseases. And I believe we're just beginning to see the first um, round waves of this. So, and I also wanted to point out really, really quickly before I get into the reading, Wuhan sits directly on the 30 degree northern horizontal ley line, which is the ley line that has expanded the human population to its size of 7 billion in 200 years. So this is all generating primarily from three dynasties, the Han dynasty, the Roman empire, and the golden age of India. These three empires basically solidified um, the majority of the population on, on the planet on that 30 degree um, northern horizontal ley line. So um, I just want to point out that anything that's gonna happen pandemic, pandemic wise, virus wise, uh, populative wise, that this is all going to uh, basically uh, follow the population growth patterns. Um, and that's how this is gonna happen every time that this type of situation hits. So, um, you know, but we have to keep in mind that the human race wouldn't even be alive right now at all if it wasn't for ancient viruses that hadn't infected us. So I'm gonna get into a video talking about the ancient viruses and what they've had to do with the basically just, you know, the expansion of the human population in general. And you can find that video on my Patreon. I haven't put it up yet, Patreons, but I will be putting it up here within the rest of the week. And um, yeah, just know that these viruses do comprise like nearly 10% of the human body's genome. So, I mean, we are 10% virus, um, dormant ancient virus. So we have to remember that it's a part of our genetics. And um, it's it's interesting. It's interesting because it's worldwide panic. There's death, there's famine, there's all of these things that come from basically opening the seals. The seals get opened up in the 12th dimensional spectrum of the planetary body, the planetary seals, the planetary gates within that 12D structure. Um, this is one of the things that happens um, within this seal opening. So I just want to recommend first and foremost, all of my Galaxy Seeds, Star Seeds family, just start preparing for possible you know, quarantine situations, make sure that you've been purchasing surgical masks before you can no longer get them off the shelf. You know, don't wait until we're in a worldwide state of emergency to be prepared. So family, please start preparing. Just stock up on vitamin C, oxygenated water, because the virus blocks the body's ability to absorb oxygen and also get healthy food supplies. Just be prepared is all I'm saying. Um, don't expect the worst, expect the best, but be prepared is what I'm saying, guys. So, okay, family, Liar and Ascension reading. I'm going to shuffle these cards up and lay the deck out. We'll get into the overall Ascension reading for Liar and Starseeds. Okay, Lyra and Starseeds, I apologize if I was talking really, really fast. It was kind of like I had got on and I had like a super just accelerated energy that was kind of flowing out of me. Um, very, very powerful. So it's very much in alignment to the actual photonic blasts. You can tell in my tonal um, chords, my, my voice that, <clears throat> and that's what you always want to look for when you're determining, um, you know, basically any type of perception whatsoever. You always want to hear clear audiently through the tones, um, what reality fields that person's bringing forth. You can tell so much within the tonal chords. This is where all angelic presence, I mean, everything that you want to experience um, according to energetics, um, the bioenergetic field, you can hear everything within the tones of someone's voice. So uh, this blast of fast talking right now, this is just coming from really it's matching the Lyran encryption because everything is happening at such an atomic monadic speed right now for the Lyran star seed. So I do my readings. The first row is the human aspect. The bottom row is the galactic aspects, but they do merge and they do kind of just coincide. So just roll with me. Um, but essentially we have the king of wands and with the king of wands, Lyran star seeds on a human level, you know, there's a lot of, uh, dominion that's kind of coming up so you might be feeling a little bit guarded you're kind of uh 
protecting territory right now, you may feel like you're protecting temples. This is coming up. Um, and what I mean by temples is by sacred spaces, sacred biological structure, your body. Um, there's been a disregard for um, even altars at this time. So it's just um, kind of recaring for the body. I'm seeing that a lot is coming back within the body. There has been um, a lot of photonic energy that's been coming through in waves particularly affecting the Lyran encryption right now. So you guys are doing a lot of DNA repair. Like I said, a lot of mutations, a lot of genetic uh, alterations that are happening right now. And you're bringing forth that as it trickles down the density structures right now, you're kind of the leaders in this energy. So there's a lot of passion ignited. There's a lot of fire. There's a lot of masculine energy that's coming through. The emotions are being activated right now. There's a lot of emotional clearing right now. Um, on a galactic level, we have the uh, Queen of Cups is going to be about um, resolving a lot of misunderstandings at this time. It's going to be about uh, getting through some dishonesty. So there's been some dishonesty. There's also been some spontaneity, um, rash decisions that have been made up until this point. But it's kind of like the energetic structure with the Lyran encryption has been unraveling. It's been um, coming undone, so to speak. So you might be feeling frayed, kind of like an electric wire, kind of like you're um, having like major geometric collapses, major geometric rewrites within the encoding of the biology. Um, this is happening very much planetarily. This is why so much is going down with, you know, the pestilence that we're seeing, the viruses that are spreading. Um, a, an a accelerated collective wave of uncertainty and panic and um, just fear. There's been a, a whole new um, insertion of fear within the collective. Um, so the Lyrans are very, very sensitive to this because they do oscillate at that full 12th dimensional spectrum. So whatever the collective is going through within as the pendulum swings, the Lyrans are clearing that density as it swings back into the higher structures, into the actual materialization. Um, and they are quantum computing, quantum collapsing those timelines. So major, major quantum timeline jumps, you might have feel that you have basically entered into an entirely different reality field that no one's kind of walking in. And it's kind of a crazy space to be in. Um, I'm seeing uh, even on a human level, biological level, this full illumination of a uh, seven dimensional body, full illumination of all seven chakras. So many are beyond the I am presence. Most of the Lyran Collective is very much in the seat of the soul, over soul collective uh, transmutation and also transharmonic, transdimensional um, shifting and navigation as they kind of restructuralize the Merkaba system, the morphogenetic field, um, the 24 point pillar was coming through the Arcturian seventh density. Um, so from seventh density to 12th density, uh, uh, Lyrans, you're very much illuminated and you are collapsing those from, I want to say, a lot of help from the Pleiadians as well. Pleiadians are coming through strong. Also, a lot of connections to Saturn. Um, so it can feel like a reprimanding. It can feel like um, you've met all of your chances to do the right thing, or you've just kind of hit a wall, or the universe has just kind of blocked you right now, even though your light body is illuminated, even though you are fully um, expanded asc ascension-wise, you're fully expanded um, within that primal life force structure inside of you. It's just that... Um, it's expanded so far that it's collapsing within seventh density structures. So you're actually collapsing old timelines and reality fields from the past. I would say by three months. Going back three months, there has been an entire collapse that's gone down. So it's almost like a like a like a gap has um, basically closed down and um, forced. Um, anything attached to the future timeline within the last three months, those reality fields have collapsed. So there's been a complete change, a complete redirection, complete navigational shift within the actual dimensional structure of the materialization that's going to unfold um, into the summer months is what I'm seeing right now for Lyran Starseed. Um, on a galactic level, we have the Four of Cups. And so um, this is about you kind of daydreaming right now. It's almost like having, you're procrastinating, um, you're in your own world right now, um, you're trying to re-harness stability, um, harmony, but there's just been a lot of stagnation. There's been a lot of fatigue. Um, Lyra and Starseeds, you may be feeling very wiped out at this time. Um, I mean, I personally, um, I actually don't have Lyra 
um, specifically in any conjunction places within my planetary chart, but I am very much supported by the Lyran encryption. I have um, communication with uh, Lyran Galactic Council, and therefore they've honestly been the the ancient, ancient, ancient um, levels of human consciousness um, within my ancestry that has been up supporting me. And so um, I've been receiving all of the information that's happening with the Lyran encryption. And so uh, it's very much collapsing. Um, I've, I've spent probably the last five days um, within a very, very expanded void space where every day it's just been unable to wrap my mind back around the physical reality where you literally can't do things within the physical you have to actually shut down and just allow that process to happen. That's very much happening for Lyran Starseed at this time. Also, we have the Eight of Wands. If you guys hear some dogs barking in the background, it's because I have my window open. Um, what I'm seeing here is there's a lot of Antares energy that's coming in to support Lyra right now. Um, I'm seeing Antares. Antares is, the encryption is assisting with the activeness of the mind right now. It's trying to assist the Lyran starseed with the confrontations and the challenges right now that they're going for, the transformation that they're going through right now, the spiritualization that they're going through right now. I'm picking up on a triplicity of Sagittarius energy. Um, so it's almost like there's a lot of hope that's kind of being collapsed. There's um, a strong feeling of regret that's coming in. There's also um, some uncertainties as well. Um, there's been a lot of just immoral behavior. Um, there was a lot of materialistic behavior. The, the mind was too active. All of that's kind of collapsing down um, and it's coming through Antares. Antares is assisting with the warfare that's going on right now within the 12th dimensional spectrum um, because we have to remember that this warfare is playing out in all 12 density structures. Um, the Lyrans do have the most evolutionary advantage and therefore um, they are some of the most ancient levels of human consciousness. Um, they are some of the most advanced races and uh, the Lyrans uh, in turn created the Elohim and the Avatar Matrix. And therefore um, there are you know, there are contracts within the Stargate systems, just as there are contracts within soul contracts within our um, human interactions and our human incarnations and in that we took. The star systems also hold contracts. So Antares is contracted um, in some way to the Lyran encryption, at least planetarily with what's aligned astrologically at this time um, to help with the intensity of what is being reflected right now to the Lyran star seed. So just know you're basically friends with Antares right now um, and it's helping clear with some of this um, warfare that the DNA is under mutationally at this time. We have the uh, Ace of Swords and um, so this is very much going to be some new beginnings that's coming up. So, but it's going to be thrusted through some, I want to say, I don't want to say violence, but it's not over. Like there's still a lot that has to clear. Um, it's far from over and there's still going to be a lot that is rapidly evolving the species. And this is what I mean by some of the warfare that Antares is assisting with, um, because it's 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 going to be taking many many to the next wave of ascension many many into um, particular ships or what i just want to call um celestial appearances uh, uh whether that per whether that presents an et ut um however that's presenting um but it, there's just going to be an acceleration of that because of all of the planetary work that's expediting with that in lyran density within that lyran encryption so prepare to see you know more spacecraft um, they're definitely hovering, I want to say particularly in specific generated areas, Australia, um, South America. These are some hot spots at this time. Um, also California, there's some stuff going down in California. Also in China, the 30 degree north horizontal ley line. Um, that entire ley line would be extra accelerated with craft activity. Um, 
and, and that just parallels the mutations that are happening within the genetic species. Remember that the ET craft parallel the genetic mutation within the DNA. And so this is kind of being rapidly accelerated at this time. Um, I, I, I sense a level of violence, but this violence is in turn um, the genetic structure and the molecular structure that is um, going through this level of cellular repair at this time. So all of this editing of the genetic material, all of these genetic keys, um, all of this genetic diversity, all of this mutation, um, it's under warfare, particularly from virus, from the virus right now. And so um, this is something that the Lyrans are taking on um, as a collective, um, very, very much a part of their destiny to um, serve in in these mutations and so um it's not over yet it's going to get a little bit harder before it gets better and we're kind of in for the long ride we're in for the long haul um but the spiritual body the accelerated body the immune system is actually highly expanded at this time anytime that starships are presenting anytime that you're having experiencing that pa parallel or that acceleration of that encryption where it's heightened it's excessive you're extending into the higher points of the quasi crystal within the light body within the bioenergetic sphere you've gone into you know angular reality fields pole tilt reality fields all of these experiences this is particularly mir mirroring what's happening on a biological level. And so um, just know that this is all playing out heavily right now within the Lyran encryption. So, you know, just hang in there, guys. We're going to get through all of these mutations. We're going to get through. It's actually going to expand the species. It's going to progenerate the species into the next race. That's what we're literally describing right now. That's what we're literally working through right now as a collective. Lyrans are the ones that are bringing this through um, the most. And I would say it's so crazy to me because over the last few months, like I've been pleading, pleading, pleadings are going through this, pleadings are going through this. It's like, no, right now the Lyrans are the ones that are bringing this through because they're repairing the polarity in the universal body. And therefore everything that happens on a collective, at least a viral mutation is going to bring us back to the original, the original earliest genetic relationship that humanity, uh, that are, are the original ancestors, which are the Lyrans. They are the ones that will be repairing um, all strands of the 12 strand overtones and the 12 strand base tones. And the six of pentacles, honestly, that can, rep that can also represent extreme polarities, having and having not. Um, it can, you know, be domination and submission. It's kind of like it's one or the other right now. I wanna say that um, I'm feeling patronage um, and passion, but there's also great loss and also um, trouble of money. I'm seeing some financial issues at the moment right now for the Lyra and Starseed. Again, I'm sensing a lot of Pleiadian energy and Aldebaran coming through. So there's a strong presence of Archangel Michael right now that is holding down um, and is basically assisting the Lyra and Starseed, the Lyra and Encryption. Um, there's a guilt as well for, uh, consuming the apple. I kept, I kept hearing last night, Johnny Appleseed, Johnny Appleseed. And I'm like, why am I hearing John, Johnny Appleseed? Um, there's like something to do with guilt from Genesis. There's a, there's a guilt coming through Genesis. Um, and it's, it's what's upholding some of these paradigm structures for the victim victimizer mentality. All of these things, this is all resurfacing because as collective trauma, collective viruses, collective shadow, collective warfare all starts to play out within the actual templates of the materialization of earth structures, it therefore trickles down and it regresses us to points in time within the civilization where these actual energetic contracts were made and we all collectively regress to heal that. And so that's where you can see here the six of uh, swords. So there's a collective uh, dissension that is going on, or you could say regression if you want to look at the dissension in terms of going into the density or regressing back to the past. Either way, we're moving in a direction where the information is coming down and it's seeding into <laughs> the apple or into the genesis or the progenerator, the biological, the bio uh, energy, the bio regenerative process ultimately where it's regenerating 
And so, yeah, um, there's a lot of regeneration that's happening. Like I said, uh, a lot of craft ET activity that's going to mirror, mirror that regeneration. Um, so uh, just uh, be prepared for the collective as a whole to be going through a dissension process. And it's important to understand ascension and descension. It's just the accelerative or decelerative motion of the primal life structures in accordance to the reality field experiences that you are picking up on in your perception. Okay, so it's just, you know, it's a natural process. It's the ultimate evolutionary biological process. And therefore, you know, these processes are normal, but it's, this is just our way of wording it. We're navigating through it we're understanding it ultimately um we're just result we're resolving collectively extreme polarities and this is um and honestly this is what it's going to be like as it goes in more into pole tilt shift um the polarities will be more extreme more and more extreme more and more extreme until pole tilt happens and so um just be prepared to be amping up with all of this um, reconstructing this reconfiguration that's going on changes the new norm changes what you know this is our new reality changes changes the now now is change <laughs> now is change on the ground you see what I'm saying okay guys I feel like I kind of rushed through this reading I really hope that you enjoyed this today I'm gonna slow it down on my next one I'm gonna go slower for my Orion reading because I feel like I need to explain this 30 degree northern horizontal ley line in more, you know, depth. But yeah, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this reading. If you would like a Starseed Origin reading, you can find me at indigoangel222.com and check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash indigoangel. I love my patrons, you guys. Thank you for staying with me. I am going to be buckling down on some new content this week. So I'm hoping to get that out to you guys. And um, I love you so much. I'll see you on the next video.